Hey, welcome to part four of my makeup collection video. Today is going to include four categories. And three of those are very small. So brows, like eye primers, eyeliners, and then all lip products. So the fourth is gonna include my liners um, and any kind of lip products. So first I brought out um, brows and primers. So I'm not very, <laughs> Like, I, I don't experiment very much with eyebrow pencils. I kind of find the ones that I like and I stick with them. Um, I just got finished using up my Benefit, no, not the Precisely My Brow, the Goof Proof Brow Pencil. Um, it is in one of those triangular shapes, so it is a thicker pencil. I don't mind those at all, and I really like Benefit eyebrow products. Um, so currently what I'm working on is the e.l.f. ultra precise brow pencil this is in the shade taupe i did have a light brown color that actually seemed a little bit too warm on me so i ended up decluttering it but the taupe is more mm, i would say like cool toned it is a very fine tip um, i do like that i'm not very picky i will use a very fine tip or i will use a um like diamond shape tip either one of those works for me some days you know i i prefer to just go quickly and use a thicker brow pencil so um i i will grab those over like a thinner one but in terms of like the thin brow pencils the benefit precisely my brow is probably my go-to i am currently working on this one and the elf um and as you can see i have two backups I love this pencil because it's waterproof. It really is kind of like that no budge, stay all day, non-complicated product. In this pencil, I'm in the shade three and it seems to be a pretty good match. Um, but I also did purchase in the backups shade 2.5 neutral and I wanted to just neutral blonde it actually says I wanted to try this one give it a shot sometimes I feel like um, this may be a little bit too dark but sometimes I'll kind of do this to like line my brows and then maybe fill in with a lighter color so I'll give that one a shot I picked these backups this one's in the shade three I picked these backups at Ulta's 21 days of beauty sale last year. I don't even think it was this year because I liked these so much and I knew that I wanted to keep backups. One of my other favorite brow products, and I think this is super underrated, I have not heard anyone else talk of this, is the Tristique Define Sculpt and Set Brow Pencil. So on one end, it is a thick brow pencil. Um, so it's in that like V shape or diamond shape. And on the other end is a liquid. So I don't use this side very often, almost never, but I really do love this particular shade. That's one of the reasons that this is my favorite brow product. And it is in the shade, I believe, Americano. Um, it just comes off super, super well matched to my brow color, and I don't mind this tip at all. In fact, I kind of like it. I will just go really quickly. It's kind of a waxy formula, but it stays put all day, and that's really what I want. It's just something that I put on. It's easy to apply. So this is a really good one. This is my second. I have repurchased this. I did like it so much. So only three brow products. I'm testing the e.l.f. one out because I wanted to kind of give a drugstore one a, a shot, and I just happened to pick that up, but I would say these are my absolute two favorites. And unless I somehow get, I don't know, a bug at my butt to try a different one because I don't deviate very often, then for now, this is probably all I would keep in my collection. So this is also a repurchase and so is this one. So moving on to eye primers, I have tried the ABH one. It's very similar to the Juvia's Place Prep Prime Prep eye prep, eye prime, eye primer. And um, this is like a more thick kind of offers you a little bit of tint coverage eye primer. And I wanted to try this because I wanted something thicker to add to my collection. Otherwise, I typically will go for the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. So this is a very thinner, you know, thin formula. It doesn't provide any coverage to the lids. It kind of just, you know, sets them down um, and preps it for eyeshadow. But when I do want something that is like a little bit more matte and like white, if I'm gonna do a colorful shadow, I will use this instead of this. Otherwise, this is a you know all around good kind of everyday eye primer. And then I got this recently from BH Cosmetics when I placed an order for some of their shadows when I heard that they were filing for bankruptcy or going out of business and I wanted to place an order on whatever eyeshadows I could get my hands on. 
So I got this uh, base booster. It's a glitter and shadow glue. There are some shadows that I use that are harder to set down, so I wanted to give this a shot. I, I really haven't tried this yet, so I don't know, but it is, it is an eye base. Moving on to eyeliners. This is another category that I don't get crazy with. I used to wear eyeliner every single day, but I stopped because it just became too long to apply every single morning and I was always in a rush and with having kids I was like oh forget it like I just gave up on it but I never tried any really high-end eyeliners I kind of just stuck to the you know felt tip drugstore or whatever I could kind of get my hands on there um, in terms of like the liquid liner so I have three that are pencil liners I think two that are like twist ups and then one pencil they're all in black this one is one I got, I'm sure in BoxyCharm, it's Riri. It's the Luxe Gel Eyeliner in number one kill black. It's very creamy. Um, you know, when I'm looking for like a pencil, it's usually to kind of like smoke out the lower lash or like the outside of the lower lash, which I don't use very often, but it's nice to have these on hand. Next, I have one I, I think I also probably got in a boxy term. It's the W7 King Cole, and this is also in the shade black. Um, this one is more of a, this isn't the twist up, this is a, a sharpened pencil. I like the sharpened pencils sometimes because I find that, you know, they're, well, if they're still creamy, they stay a little bit longer than some of these gel ones. So I do like that one. Throwback to when I was a kid, the eyeliners that we would use looked like this and to get it to be more gel formula, we would take a lighter and melt it to make it softer. But this is LA Colors just in the shade black. And I'm pretty sure I got this at the Dollar General just to pick it up. It is, you know, as far as like pencils go, it's pretty creamy. Um, I wouldn't say that it's overly pigmented and I kind of like that. It's a little bit more charcoal than the gel liner and the W7 one. I have one from NYX. This is the Jumbo, what are they called? Jumbo Eye Pencil and it's in the shade Milk. I liked this to kind of bright, like I'll put this in my waterline. It's nice, it's easy, it stays put. I don't use it very often, but sometimes if I'm using, I don't know, if I wanna kind of like make my eyes look a little bit bigger, I'll throw this in the waterline, so it's okay. Next, I have two colored liners. This one's from ColourPop. This is the Raw Beauty Christie collab. Uh, ColourPop does really good eyeliners. Um, I have tried a couple of theirs, but mostly, you know, I ended up giving them to my sister because I don't use them often enough, but I did want to keep a brown one, and I do like this. It's a, it is a gel liner, so it's a, a twist-up retractable, and it's super pigmented. It stays. I like, I like the ColourPop eyeliners. And then one that stays all day, even through, you know, like a wash, it's very difficult to remove, is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil. This one's in the shade Tiger Eye. I got this one to kind of be fun. It does have a shimmer to it, but I did kind of like that. And I will sometimes use this on my eyelid for just a little extra shimmer and maybe like a little shimmery wing. So these ones stay tremendously long. Like even if I now swatch this on my hand, I will wash my hand and it will stay on there for like the rest of the night. It'll take a couple of washes to come out. Next, I have like the liquid felt tip liners. Um, they're all in black. This is the ABH one, the liquid eyeliner. I don't really care for the ABH one because I do find that the applicator is a little thick and it's like very, very wet. And so a lot of product kind of comes off and it's not a super clean application. Uh, it's okay. I mean, the staying power is really, really good, but it's, it's kind of hard to work with. And then next I have one from Color Girl. This is the Intensify Me. Um, this one is a more precise liner and I do like this one. It isn't as black as the ABH, but it is a nice, thin, precise liner. I really do like this one. Next, I think I also got this one in a boxy charm and have not tried it yet. I just recently took it out of the box. This is from Estate. I don't know other than that, like what it is, but it does look nice. Um, it is a more precise pencil than the ABH so or um, tip. So it does look more black than the LA Colors one or CoverGirl one rather. So, I, you know, I would try this again. I'm not reaching for eyeliners very much anymore. So, but this one does look like a good one. Like it's pretty pigmented, pretty thin line. So it looks nice. Next, I have another one from LA Colors. This is the Graphics Eyeliner. Uh, this one's very similar to the ABH one. I'll show you. This is like a really thick, um, 
a really thick end. It is a little bit easier to work with than the ABH one. It does apply a little bit more. It dries down quicker. The ABH is really hard to dry down. Like it takes a super long time, but it does stay all day. So I like it if I can, you know, wait for the dry time. This one dries down a little bit quicker. Uh, I, it, you know, it's a very similar tip to this one. Otherwise, you know, it is a good eyeliner. And then the last one is the LA Colors Precise Eye Marker. I like this tip. It's similar to like the Estate one. It is very like, you know, easy to apply, no hassle, but it is, you know, a similar kind of like matte finish, dries down quickly, not as pigmented. I'd say it's definitely more pigmented than the CoverGirl one, but it's okay. Again, I don't grab for these that often, but I would say if I was gonna get rid of any of them, would probably be the two with the, you know, the, the felt tip that I just really don't like, that's super long and kind of that wet formula. When I am trying to, you know, like get something super quick and just kind of use like a little brush, a fine tip brush to just get it on my lid or cre create a, a, a wing, I will use like this pot one. This is the Maybelline Lasting Drama Gel Liner. It, it's okay, I like to, to keep at least one pot in my collection um, just because sometimes this applicator is easier than a wet formula. So it, it's a good one. So I totally forgot to include mascaras when I was doing the intro, but this also includes mascaras. So I keep a lot more open than I should at any one time. I have repurchased some, but really only my favorite favorites. I do keep a couple in here that I have purchased as backups and I kind of need to get rid of, so there's duplicates. I kind of need to get rid of the ones that were already dry, dried out that I meant to replace anyway. So the ones that I have repurchased more than once is the Essence Lash Princess Mascara. Um, this is the older one and so it's almost dried out so this is the new one. I should chuck this one and I probably will soon. Um, I really like this. I know it's really popular. It's their most popular mascara. The one con about this particular formula is that it is really wet and for me I have to really be careful about letting it dry down before, I don't know, you know, looking down or looking up and my eyelash is kind of touching my face, that it takes a little while. And in the humidity in the summertime, I find that this will transfer on me. That is the only con that I have about this. It's easy to put on, it gives great length. I really like the wet formula. I prefer a more wet formula. The only thing is that sometimes that wet formula really does backfire in more humid, summer months and then another one that i have repurchased is the lancome this is the lash idol um this is my second i i did purchase a mini to start with this is one that i really like because it's a cleaner formula it really doesn't provide a lot of volume it's more just lengthening mascara and there are some days where i want something that's uncomplicated that really doesn't you know need to give me a lot of volume i just want length i don't want my lashes to clump up so i will reach for this one it's easy to take off it doesn't smudge it's just kind of a sophisticated formula um, I have used that term in the past but in, in my other collection videos but that's how I feel about it it's just kind of sophisticated it just gives that length it separates it's you know it's really nice um, pigmentation um, so love this one uh, the third that I have repurchased and probably the final repurchase in this collection is the Lawless The One and Done Mascara. So they're kind of different colors, which I thought was interesting, but this is the older one and this is the newer one. Again, this is one that I need to get rid of pretty soon. Um, this is super pigmented mascara. It is black, black, black. It is a wet formula but it does dry down it doesn't smudge on me it doesn't transfer and then i have worn this mascara and it has given so much volume you know it really stands out uh, on, on my eyelashes and i've had people ask me like what mascara are you wearing and i'll say oh it's this one um and you know i don't typically get comments on my eyelashes <laughs> you know random people don't just typically like ask you about your your makeup but i have had people ask me what mascara are you wearing so i actually really really love this mascara i don't see a lot of people like on youtube that i've seen kind of rave about this but i would repurchase this over and over and over again i i like this in terms of anything that provides volume i think this is a better one i find volume on me sometimes is more of a hassle because i don't 
Okay, I don't prefer a chunkier lash. Next, I have the Lancome's uh, Monsieur Big Mascara. I know this was really popular a while ago. This is actually the waterproof version. I did purchase this one after I purchased the mini in the regular non-waterproof version. I liked this so much. So well, I think Lancome does a tremendous job, honestly, tremendous job with their mascaras. I, I don't have very many products from Lancome, but their mascaras, honestly, I just purchased the new Hypnos one and it's coming. I can't wait to try it. I'm so excited, but they do a really good job. I've never been disappointed in any of their mascaras. They last a really long time. They're pigmented. Um, I love the brush um, uh, applicator. I think that they are a more wet formula, but they're super easy to work with. And this one provides volume and length and I don't find that it transfers. I liked it so much I wanted to get the waterproof version for days where you know I'm going to go swimming or like to the water park with the kids and I want to throw on something that's not going to come off so I purchased this and when this mini runs out I'm going to get the full size. I like it so much. Two that do provide like volume as opposed to length are the Bite Beauty, this is the Upswing Mascara, and the Elf Big Mood. I really did like this at one particular time, the, the Bite Upswing. Um, and the reason that I'm kind of holding these together is I believe that Elf was making these or made this particular mascara to be a dupe for the Bite Upswing. The Bite Upswing was really popular, I'd say like a year, year and a half, maybe two years ago. And I really did like it. I thought it was pigmented. I didn't think it transferred, but it was, you know, it provided a lot of volume. So it did make my lash is kind of chunky and it did it did require that I put in a little bit of extra work where some days I, I really just don't want to hassle with that so I liked it and I wanted to because they're going out of business try and see if I could find a dupe for it and so I tried the elf big mood um, the bite is way better elf is not as I'd say it's as pigmented but it's not as like creamy or wet a formula um, I found this was chunky like I really don't like this I'll probably declutter this pretty soon it's just chunky it makes my eyelashes look chunky I gotta work extra hard to kind of unclump things and I don't like to do that so um, the bite upswing is a good one I would say that if you kind of really like volume it's one that I would go for if it's still like discounted on Sephora site website going back to oh my gosh the early 90s I think they've done a tremendous job with their mascara line. I think they always have, um, they just do a really good job in creating, you know, products that are, that are pretty affordable, but that perform like high end. I really believe that. So one of the ones that I really like is the Maybelline Lash Sensational. This is the, um, full fan effect. Sorry, I was reading the other side and it wasn't in English. So I really do like the applicator. It's thin, it's it's soft, it's nice, it's curved. I like it for both the upper and lower lashes. It's really pigmented, it dries down, it, but it doesn't transfer. It's just an overall really good mascara. And then next I have the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High. This one reminds me very much like the Lancome Lash Idole. I think it is a clean formula that just provides length but doesn't provide, you know, any kind of volume. It doesn't, it's not chunky, it's not hard to work with, and I really like that. The only thing I dislike is that this packaging, oftentimes this insert will start coming out and then this is very flimsy. So the two cons about the mascara are packaging, but not application, not formula, and this is, and I should have said this before, this is actually a second second or third repurchase for me. I really like it. I think Maybelline hits mascaras out of the park. I really do. I do have a tubing mascara from She Glam. Um, it is the Long At Last Precision Tubing Mascara. Um, I just recently purchased this. I I'm not sure how I feel about She Glam. Honestly, I haven't read enough into their products, but I am kind of learning. So it's maybe not one that I kind of want to feature here. I did think it was an okay tubing mascara, but one tubing mascara that I absolutely love is the Thrive Cosmetics liquid lash extensions. I think it's really good. Um, I like this a plastic um, applicator. I think it's a wet formula, but it dries down really quickly. It's easy to remove, super pigmented, and really just gives you that tubing mascara effect without being a hassle. It is a really good one. There are a lot of like different tubing mascaras on the market, but I think 
Thrive did a really good job with this and I really like it. This is one that I would repurchase again. Next I have Charlotte Tilbury's P Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. Wow, Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. I almost messed that up. I really like this one. I think it's similar to like that plastic applicator that Thrive has. Um, I also like this because it's just really clean without being chunky. You know, it's, it's not really designed, I don't think, to provide any kind of volume. The only thing that I would say about this is that it does, it does transfer. Um, that is the only con to this. And of course it's pricier. I really did like this when I first tried it. And then kind of over time I've realized, hmm, in the summer months, this is transferring more than I really want it to. And I have other mascaras that do similar things that really don't transfer in the summer months. So I probably won't repurchase this, even though this is my second one of this. I just find that there are other mascaras at the drugstore that will do similar things that don't cost as much as this one. For example, if I kind of want that clean, wet formula, I'll probably reach for Lash Princess over the Charlotte Tilbury because they're very similar. Next, and by unpopular opinion, um, I have one that I dislike, and this is the Rare Beauty Mascara. I forget what it's called because this is just a mini and I don't feel like it's on this. It's definitely not on this packaging. It just says black mascara. I don't like it at all. I think a lot of people did really like this. I find that it's too dry formula for me. Uh, I don't really care for how chunky it makes my lashes look. Even in her like promo photos and on Sephora, it is a chunkier look in volume than I prefer on my lashes. I didn't like it. I, I felt like it transferred so it would start to flake off. I just didn't really like this. I, I keep it because I keep trying to use it thinking, is that really how I felt about it? Should I try it again? Will I like it next time? And I just like it every single time. So I will not repurchase this. I don't like it. If you're someone that's like me that really doesn't like a lot of volume but prefers length, then I would say this is probably not the one to get. I just really, for my preferences, wouldn't recommend this. One that I really do like is the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes. I don't see a whole lot of people talking about this, but the reason that I really like this is because I think that it is, you know, it kind of gives you that all in one. You have the option. I, I use both upon application, right? So one side is curl and length, and then the other side is volume. I will use both of them. Um, so I'll do the curl and length first, and then I'll do the volume after. I don't know, sometimes I switch it up. Can't. I think I do the curl and length and then the volume. But you have that option. You don't have to use both sides, but you can if you want to. Um, I find that it, it does like provide a lot of length to my lashes, just the right amount of volume without being too clumpy. It dries down, it doesn't transfer. I think it's a really good one. This is, I would say it's a repurchase. I only had like the mini trial one that I got on like, um, you know, place your, get your free two samples with your Sephora order. And I liked it so much I wanted to purchase the full version. I'm not disappointed. I say it's pricey and there are other drugstore options that can do similar things, but I like it. I mean, I liked it enough that I was like, all right, okay, free order, you got me. I'll, I'll get it, I'll get the, the full size. So I do like it. I don't see a lot of people talking about it, but I'd recommend it. Next, I have a small one. This is just from Clinique. Oh my goodness, what is it called? Bottom Lash Mascara. That's So that is why I keep this one. Um, it is just a bottom lash mascara. It's tiny. Sometimes these brushes are so big that I have a hard time trusting myself with my lower lashes and applying it down there. And sometimes the formula is just so wet. Even if I like it for my upper lashes, I don't care for it for my lower lashes. So I specifically bought this one because it's a lower lash mascara. And a lot of times I just want like a really, really light coat on my bottom lashes. And I don't want, you know, full pigment. I don't, I don't want a really long um, lower lash. And so I'll just grab for this. And finally, I have the new MAC Stack Mascara. This again is just a mini. It has a very similar applicator to that Huda Beauty. I noticed that right away when I opened it. I love this mascara. I think it has great pigmentation. It's not chunky. It doesn't transfer on me. Uh, it gives really good length. I was surprised when I got this because I haven't had many MAC things wow me recently so I was super surprised I love this 
the only con, the, the only con I have about this, and it's totally because of my own eye sensitivity, the minute I put this on, my eyes are irritated and watering. Whatever is in this particular formula, whatever the ingredients are, does not suit my sensitive eyes. And I don't get that a lot with a ton of mascaras. Occasionally I will, but man, it immediately makes my eyes irritated. So I really can't wear it. Like I've tried, you know, I don't know, about 12 times with this. And it took me about, I don't know, half a dozen to realize, oh, that's what's going on. I'm sensitive to the mascara that I put on because I put on the same mascara two days ago and that's when my eyes were bothering me. So if you don't have eye sensitivity, is a really good one. If, if you do, I would say steer clear of this for sure. Okay, moving on to lip liners. I'm so sorry if you can hear my fan above me. It is the end of July in Florida. I am upstairs and even though my AC is cranked to probably 71 degrees, it is still extremely hot upstairs. I have a really big house and so it's a large space to cool down. It gets very hot up in here. <sighs> up in here. <laughs> it gets really hot up here in the evening time. So without a fan overhead, it's like nearly impossible to stand being up here this long. So I apologize if you can hear it. It does occasionally kind of make noises. Um, even though it's a brand new fan. So bear with me if you hear it. I'm really sorry. I'm just trying not to like sweat to death while I'm recording this. So this is all of my lip liners. I have a couple repeat brands because I liked the formula so much. So I'll do my best to kind of like grab them out and show them to you together. So I definitely know that I have two from Huda Beauty and these are the Lip Contours 2.0 and I have them in the shades. This is Pinky Brown and this is Rusty Pink. They're very pigmented. They last a good amount of time. It's a pretty, you know, waxy formula, but I wouldn't say that it's, you know, it doesn't tug or anything like that. So I like the Huda Beauty liners. And then I have a couple from NYX and this is the retractable lip liner. Oh, I forgot to mention these are also retractable liners. Um, I prefer the retractable liners. Let's see, do I have another one? I think I have four in this NYX, if I'm correct. I could be mistaken. Uh, maybe, yep, here's the fourth. So um, I prefer retractable liners over like the pencil. So this is the retractable lip liner. This was in the shade Nectar. This is in Jewel. This is in Plum. And this is in Nude Pink. I probably started with two and then liked the formula so much that I got another two. I like all of these shades for different reasons, different times of the year, and I think it's a it's a good drugstore formula. Um, I'm not terribly picky when it comes to liners, but I do notice when they don't stay as long, and that's kind of annoying, like why put it on if it's not gonna stay, unless I'm gonna use it for maybe like a more creamy formula. Um, but these are these are good. A more creamy formula that I have is the Sephora liner. So I think I have two of these ones. Here's one and here is the other one. So these are the Rouge Gel lip liners. I have mine in the shades Sink or Sauce and then Nothing But Nude. I think these are really good colors. I like the tones of them. They're just ultra creamy, like super creamy. They don't last a super long time. They're more like a shiny finish than a matte finish. And some people don't like that. So that, that is kind of how these perform. I don't mind them. They just don't stay very long. And then I have one from Pat McGrath. This is the Permagel Ultra Lip Pencil. And this is in the shade Living Legend. This is the kind that you sharpen. Um, and I don't mind it. It's, it's better than wood because it has this like plastic that you uh, essentially kind of shave off and it's not quite as hard. So I, I do like it for that reason. When they're pencils, I prefer that they be like this than like say a hard one, for example, like the Persona or, or this NYX lip pencil. I just don't care for that really hard wood pencil. Uh, it's a good shade, it lasts long, it's pretty creamy but uh, it's pricey. So there are others that I could get that do similar things that don't cost as much. So her lip liners are good. And then as I was mentioning, kind of the other like, you know, harder kind of wood formula is the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Lip Cheat 
reshape and resize lip liner and this is in the shade pillow talks this is the, the famous shade i think i just got a mini in this one because i wanted to try it out i love the color it really is a good lip liner so i like this one um two that are in the pencil format um, one I like and one I don't care for. So this is the NYX lip liner. I actually have two of them. Um, they're okay. They're kind of a, a harder formula and that's probably inherent to the pencil that they are as opposed to like a gel liner. I guess they stay pretty good amount of time. It's hard to judge because I got two colors that are so similar to my lip. I think this one is in the shade Nude Pink. It's basically the shade of my lip, so it's a washout for me. Um, but this one's a little bit better. The Peekaboo Neutral, it does provide a little bit of color on my lip. A harder, like thicker formula, not very creamy. So these aren't my favorites. My personal preference, preference is that I gravitate towards the gel liners. One that I really, really like, even though it's the pencil, and as you can see, I use it a lot. But this is the Persona Lip Liner in the shade Almond. I love this color. It really it accents my lips really well. It's a color that I wear a lot in like lipsticks um, or you know shades that complement it a lot. It is just creamy. It stays all day. It's a good tone. The only thing I don't like about it is that I have to sharpen it, but that's just a personal preference. I have one from Patrick Ta, and this is an interesting one. This is one of his new precision lip liners, and this is in That's Why She's Late. I do have the matching lipstick. This is one that you actually click up. So I don't, uh, I don't love that. And honestly, this being so thick, it's almost like, why don't you wear this as a matte lipstick as opposed to like a liner? Because I can't create the greatest, most precise line with this thing, to be totally honest. It fills in more of my lip than I normally would, but I like the formula. The lasting power is, you know, A plus. Next, I have four from Juvia's Place. Uh, I bought all four probably at the same time. I heard good things about the Juvia's Place liner, so I wanted to give them a shot. They are the gel liners. They're called the Lux liners. This is in the shade Lush. This is in the shade Cola. This one is in Love Me, and this one is in Sweet Nothing. I like these shades for all different reasons. This is more purpley. Um, this is a more brown tone, berry, and this is really kind of like a highlight. Um, it's a it's a taupey color, a highlight to my lip color if I'm just kind of like doing a gloss over it. I think these are really creamy. I like that they're retractable. Uh, I think the staying power is pretty good. I don't, there's really almost nothing of Juvia's Place that I dislike. I think they have a really good line overall. So I would recommend those. Two that I think are really off brand that I probably got in like a boxy charm um, are the, let's see, what are these? This is the Moonlit Lipstick Pencil in Loon number 49 Core, I'm thinking, is the shade. Um, this is again one of those gel liners, so it's a twist up. Um, I've used it one time, and I've used it only once because of the color that it is. It's a very, um, you know, like a brick red. And so I, I recently got this, and I don't usually use brick reds in the summertime. I'll use it more in the fall. If the lasting power is good, it's really creamy. It is not a bad lip pencil at all. Another one that I got in BoxyCharm is from Beauty Vault. It's in the shade Carmen. Um, it is not retractable. You do have to sharpen this. I have used this a couple times. It's again in a color that I wouldn't wear every single day. It's like that berry tone but it's a good lip liner. I don't dislike it. I think it's creamy and pigmented and lasts a good amount of, good amount of time. I don't know what else you can say about lip liners. So I lied, there is a third that I got from BoxyCharm. Instead of two, there's three. This one's from the brand Mellow and it's their lip pencil in the shade Rose. I believe this is a sharpened one. Yeah, you do have to sharpen it and it comes with a sharpener at the end. Um, I love this color. This is a color that I would probably wear on a more everyday basis, especially for a lip liner. Um, it's very creamy, pigmented, it, it's good lasting power. Again, this is one that I don't have anything bad to say, it's just that I've never heard of the brand Mellow before. One that I don't really care for is the Milani Color Statement Lip Liner in the shade Nude. It tugs, like it's a tugger for sure. Uh, it's not a super creamy formula. It is a pencil that I don't, you know, love to sharpen. You know, I've said that like five times now. I like the color um, because it is, even though it's nude, it's like that mauve nude. So it is really nice, um, but I do find that it tugs. 
Next, I have one that I recently just purchased. This is from About Face. This is their, their fixed lip pencil. It's matte, and I don't know what the shade is. Maybe the shade is matte you know it's pretty pigmented it's pretty creamy i really do like that about this um so it's it's um let's say you know it's a b plus next i have one from what is this smashbox this is the always sharp lip liner in nude light this color i don't love but what i kind of do like about it is that it, you know it it's um it's the twist up but it also has the sharpener in the lid. So every single time you turn this, it's sharpening the pencil before you open it. So it always has a very sharp point. Um, I don't know if Smashbox makes these anymore because I think that I picked this up at TJ Maxx. It does have, you know, good lasting power. It's an okay one. I would say that some drugstore ones are better than this one. And I don't even know if Smashbox makes it anymore. So not sure it's even worth talking about that much. Another new one that I just recently got is the Rare Beauty Kind Words Matte Lip Liner in the shade Humble. I, I like this one. I think it is very similar to the About Face one, and this is a bit creamier than this formula, but they're very similar in colors, and they perform pretty similarly. It's an overall, you know, decent lip liner. This is a good one. It is not a bad formula. Next, I have Marc Jacobs Pout Liner. What is this called? Let me see if I can read it. It is the pout liner long wear lip pencil in the shade primrose but this is one of my favorite lip pencils so not only for the shade but that it's creamy um that it is a retractable lip pencil and it's long wearing so it's a shame that a lot of his um you know beauty products are either totally out of stock or just discontinued and we don't know the future state of it because there are a lot of Marc Jacob products that I actually do like and I just love the color. Another one that I really like that I am sad to see go was the KKW Beauty Liner and this was the lip liner in Nude One. Um, I really liked this shade and even though it is the sharpened type of pencil, it was just really creamy. It was really nice. It lasted a long time and not complicated. I have no idea if this you can even get her beauty products anymore because as her rebrand came, it seemed like mm, what happened to the entire line that she started with. And I felt like some of the stuff was pretty good. I felt like her lip liner was good. I felt like her lipsticks were good. And I'll show those to you in a little bit. One that I don't like is the Jason Wu um, Stay In Line Lip Pencil. I don't find that there's anything special about this. It is the Sharpen Up type. And honestly, I picked a shade that washes my lips out. This one kind of like, meh, it's not my, it's not good. I wouldn't recommend it. Next, I have two from LA Girl. This is their Shockwave Nude Lip Liner, and I have mine in the shades. Karma is up here, and then this one is Mauve. I think that these are super pigmented, but they're a really interesting formula. They, they almost like kind of peel off because it's such a thick formula. So interesting. I mean, I'm glad that I tried them. I just don't know that they're my absolute favorite. The best thing about these is that they are super pigmented. Next, I have a Kylie Cosmetics. This is the Kylie Jenner Ulta Beauty Lip Liner. I don't know if this was like an exclusive to Ulta. It probably was. I like this shade a lot. Um, it's one of those that you have to sharpen, so I do an absolute terrible job. It's very creamy. Um, it's pigmented. It lasts a long time, but I don't even know if you can get your hands on it. I don't know anything about her new launch of lip liners, but if she has them, I mean, they're not bad. I would say that her lip liners are way better than like her matte liquid lipsticks for sure. And then finally, I have one from Wet n Wild. This is the gel lip liner in Plum Together. Super creamy. Um, it's very, very pigmented. And I would repurchase this particular pencil from Wet n Wild in other shades before I would repurchase some of the ones that I like in high ends. Because this is just an all around good vegan, you know, drugstore lip liner. So really good. Um, that is it for the lip liners. So I will go and collect all of my lip products and then we'll go over them. Okay, here is all of my bullet lipsticks. I'm gonna break this up into three parts. The first part is going to be bullet lipsticks. The second piece will be the like liquid lips. And then the third is gonna be like lip glosses, lip tints, lip oils. So hopefully I've separated them good enough. Some of them might've like gotten through and I might've mixed some of them up a little bit. So I apologize. 
Um, I'm going to move this out of frame because it is very cluttered right here. And then I'm going to try and group them together by brand when I talk about them. My very favorite formula in a matte finish is from Bite Beauty. This is their Power Move Soft Matte Lipstick. I have three shades here, Juniper, Hot Tomato, and Sugar Buns. This is my absolute favorite matte formula. It is matte, but it is a powdery finish, so it is very comfortable on the lips. I think that they last a really long time. I'm sad to see these go. They're just my favorite formula. I have three more here from Bite Beauty. These two right here are their Power Move Creamy Matte Lip Crayon. Um, I'm not sure what shade this is in. The sticker has come off on this one, but this one is in the shade Arejo. Um, they're just creamy. Again, they're matte, but they're not as matte as the other ones because they do have a creamy formula. I love these. I keep these in my car because I'll just swipe them on when I'm driving. Another excellent formula. And then I have one of their lip stains. This is the Outburst Longwear Lip Stain. It is a lip stain, but it's not like a glossy one. It's more of like a matte finish. Such a good red color. Love Bite Beauty. Then I have four from MAC. I believe these are all in different finishes. This one here is Bated Breath in Love Me Lipstick. That's the finish. I'll just show you the colors. Like it. This one is in the shade Mullet Over. This is a Powder Kiss lipstick, so more of a matte version. This one here is a satin lipstick in the shade Twig. And this one is a Luster lipstick in Plum Full. Yeah, so all different finishes. I like matte lip products. Another brand that I like their lip products or their lip line is Urban Decay. So I have two here in different finishes. This is the cream and this is the shine. This one is in Weho and this one is in Flower District. This is Weho. Very pinky. I do like it like in the center of my lips. Well, that's hard to close. And then this one is almost like in a balm stick but I like it. It's pretty orange, so I can't wear this all the time. But they're just really good. They're really comfortable. I guess that's what I love about them the most. Um, I have two more that are a matte formula, and they are from the Sephora. This is the hashtag lip stories. This one is, they're both cream finishes. This one's tan line, and this one is spring break tan line. Um, unfortunately, looks more orange on like the sticker and in the pictures than it does here and it came out more brown so i don't usually wear brown so i don't really care for this shade but i like the formula and then this one is more of a mauvey color so i really do like this i think sephora's are cheap i think these are like three dollars a piece maybe five bucks a piece and i think they're i like them i have two from pat mcgrath one is a matte formula and then this one is one of her um, what are these called? Blitz Trance Lipstick. This one is in Nude Romantique. It's the one that has like the overspray. Well, I wouldn't even call it an overspray. It's just fully glittered. I think it was a limited edition. So it makes it chunky. You can actually feel the glitters on your lips. This one's a mini matte trance lipstick in Flesh 5. It's a dark shade. Otherwise, I love it. Very comfortable formula. I have two here from Rare Beauty. I believe these are both their balms. Yeah, the Dewy Lip Balm. This one's in Compliment, and this is a mini in Sincere. I like both of these. Sincere I can wear on a more everyday basis, and then Compliment is a little bit of a dark shade, so I don't wear it that often, but I did purchase the big one first, and I really liked it. Um, it does have like a, like a smell, so you know, you can taste it when you put it on. So if that bothers you, I wouldn't get these. It doesn't really bother me. It has to be really, really fragranced to really bother me. Otherwise I can tolerate it pretty much, pretty well. Um, this one I bought after the fact because I wanted a color that was more wearable because I loved this formula so much. So I like Rare Beauty's balms. Next I have one from Gucci. This is one of their balms and this is in Sally Soft Honey. It is also very fragranced. It's just a balm, so it doesn't last very long. The fragrance is definitely pretty overpowering. And this is just too overpriced to buy again, but I wanted to try it. So I'm glad I did, but wouldn't repurchase it. It's just too high of a price point, I think, and it didn't wow me for what it cost. I have one here from um, Victoria Beckham Beauty. This is the Posh Lipstick, and this is in the shade Knickers. So it's just like the Gucci one and kind of this um, sphere stick here. And 
it's it's a really good color again it's it's pretty high price i think it's like 38 dollars, same as the gucci if i'm remembering correctly and again it just didn't wow me like the price point i felt should it is also fragranced so i'm glad that i tried it it's very luxurious but it's not my everyday favorite Another one that I don't necessarily care for is the Dior Lip Glow Color Revealer Balm. This one is in the shade Rosewood. I think Rosewood's probably the most popular shade. It just doesn't have any payoff for me. If it's a lip glow, it should be slippy. It should be very emollient. It should be comfortable and feel moisturizing. This feels like it dries out my lips and there's no payoff. Like it's hard to swipe on. I don't like this. I would never, never get this again and I don't recommend it. Another one that I can't stand and will probably get rid of is one that I just bought. This is the L'Oreal Glow Paradise in the shade Nude Heaven. Talk about like fragranced. This literally tastes like I'm eating a flower. Just the whole flower right off the, right off the thing. Just It is, it just slips right into your mouth because it's such an emollient formula and it tastes terrible. It's so strong. It's like you sprayed perfume in your mouth. I don't like it. I'm gonna get rid of it. I think this is new too for, for their line. I have three from NARS. I think this was like a Studio 54 collection. It's in this really like luxe packaging. I think it was limited edition. It's like this magnet. Um, this is in the shade Mona. This is the Audacious Lipstick. You can see the Studio 54 is printed in it. It's a very brick red color. Um, I feel like it's matte. I like the formula. I just don't wear the color very often. This is a matte formula. This is their lipstick um, matte in Bokhara. It's a really nice shade and it's a very comfortable formula. I actually like NARS lipsticks. And then I have one of their balms. This is probably one that came in like the set with like the mini Laguna bronzer and the mini orgasm blush. I don't know what shade this is in. It's so hard to read, but it's just kind of a, a wash of a color. Oh no, I know what this is. This is in the shade Laguna, um, but it's just a balm. So it doesn't, it kind of hydrates. It's not overly hydrating and it, it doesn't, even though it's like brownie, it's, it's almost a clear balm. I'm gonna move on to like drugstore ones. I'm just gonna pull them out over here. I have quite a few drugstore ones, I think. So here I have the NYX. This is from the Diamond Collection. And this was in the shade High Key. Um, it's one of like the Pat McGrath ones, but it's more of an overspray because it's not actually in the stick itself. So it's a nice color and it's very comfortable. I have two here from e.l.f. This one is the Seriously Satin Lipstick. This one is in the shade Taffy. Uh, it's comfortable. It's a pretty good color. For the price point, you can't go wrong with these bullets. Um, this one I've kept in my car and in my purse, so it's really worn down. This is the Beautifully Bare Satin Lipstick in Touch of Berry. It's pretty beat up, but I, I think it is like super emollient and comfortable formula. It doesn't last a long time because it is very creamy, but drugstore bullets, they're the way to go. I have one here from Beauty Bakery. This is the Sonrisa Souffle. It's a matte formula. I like the color. It's just a little mini, but it's really cute and it's comfortable. I have one here from LA Colors. Uh, let's see what else is this. Cream lipstick in the shade Angelic. I like this. I think that drugstore lipsticks for what cream lipsticks do is really the way to go. And the last one here is from Wet n Wild. This is made for mauve. It's, it's cute, it's a cream lipstick, and it's comfortable. So my recommendation is for cream lipsticks and not something that you're looking to really last a long time is to go drugstore cream lipstick every time. Okay, I have three more here that I just grabbed. This is from Buxom. This is the Full Force Lipstick in Fly Girl. It's just not a shade that I gravitate towards. And it's an okay formula. I have two here from Becca. This one I love, 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 love the shade. It's a cream. It's in Orchid, it's called the Ultimate Lipstick Love. I love that one. This one I don't like because it's not a shade that I wear very often. And this is in the shade Sugar. But otherwise, I think these are both the same finishes. Not sure you can even get your hands on them anymore, but I probably am not going to let them go until they're done or have gone bad because I do like them. I have two here, speaking of, 
the ones that you probably can't get your hands on anymore from KKW Beauty. These were just their regular lipsticks in pink and then nude. I'll show you the colors. I like the packaging. They're very creamy. They're, they're a cream formula, but they stood out to me. Honestly, they were so comfortable that I, I think I got one and then I went back. Even though I wouldn't classify this as pink, it's more of a purpley color. It was still really nice. And these were um, above my favorite cream formulas. So I'm sad you can't get them. Um, two of my other favorite matte formulas, aside from the Bite Beauty, Juvia's Place and KVD. This was the KVD like after she split, and this one is in Lovecraft. This is the Studded Kiss Cream Lipstick. It's cream, but it's it's a light cream. Like it's um, it's definitely more matte. It lasts a long time, and the color is gorgeous. I love KVD's lipsticks. I love the Everlasting lip gloss so much. I have three of them, so you'll see them later. And then I have this one from Juvia's Place. This is matte. It is a mauve moment. Really good color. I think it's like a cute and easy to apply like shaped tip. Um, this is like number two in my favorite matte. I think it would probably be the Bite Power Move. Then it would probably be this Juvia's Place. And then third would be the, the KVD. I have one from ZC, which was an Amazon pur purchase that I keep solely for packaging purposes so it has a dragon on it it is really cool it's a matte formula and imprinted in it it's so fun is this dragon oh dude it's so cool i can't i can't get rid of it uh but i don't like the color and i don't like how drying this matte formula it is it is not very comfortable so this is their gilt gold dragon velvet lipstick in the shade m10 again totally keep it for packaging and packaging alone I have one here from Winky Lux. I think this is super creamy. It was cute. It had like a cat head imprinted in it, so it was really fun. Um, but I like the color and I like the way that this feels. It's so comfortable and emollient that I will grab this and just put this on my lips. I'm gonna put it on right now, gosh darn it. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, oh my God. I can't even describe it. I put it on and it's just so comfortable and it feels so fun, like my lips are bouncy, that I want to keep rubbing my lips together. It does have like a, a fragrance or like a taste to it, um, but it doesn't bother me at all. I just, I can't even describe it. This one is so good, I would get this again. I have a couple of things from Winky Lux, and I like them all. Next, I have just a mini from Charlotte Tilbury. This is in the shade Pillow Talk. Um, I think it's comfortable formula. I. I'm, I don't rave over this. Like, this is not one of my favorite matte formulas. I wanted to try it because it has a lot of hype, but I did, and that's why I just purchased the little mini just to see if I liked it. I have other matte formulas that I like better than this. Then I have one from Fenty Beauty. This is the Mademoiselle lipstick, and this is in Flamingo Acid. This whole line was super bright colors. So you can't really wear them on an everyday basis. And aside from this one, I don't think there's another color in that entire launch that I would wear at all. So I think this is a super comfortable matte formula. It is very like moussey matte. That's how I describe it. It's a moussey matte formula and it's very comfortable and very long wearing. It's just super pigmented, um, it, sometimes too pigmented that it almost like bleeds into my lip lines, like above my lip lines, regardless of liner. I feel like it kind of moves. So. It's not my absolute favorite, but it it's just comfortable. It's cool. I wouldn't I wouldn't buy this again because there's nothing in that whole launch that has a shade other than this one that I would touch. I have one here from Patrick Ta. This is the recent launch. This matches the lip liner that we went over earlier. So this is in the shade. That's why she's late. It's I don't know. I guess it's satin. Maybe it's a matte formula. I don't know. I think it's like kind of a cross in between. I've worn it one time and it is comfortable and. Um, I'll probably wear this more for the fall. It's a good one. It didn't knock my socks off. Like, don't run to the store and buy it right now, but it's okay. One that I absolutely love that is luxury and definitely overpriced for what it is. This is the YSL Rouge Volupti Rock and Shine. I don't know what shade this is in, but it's so cute. It has like this like star in the middle of it, and it is a very emollient formula. It does have a strong taste and scent. It like tastes like pina colada. It, it honestly gives me summer vibes every time I wear this. I I just think it's comfortable. It's very, very similar to where's the Winky Lux? Where did I put it? 
these feel the, the same. The difference is the way that they smell. Like this is pina colada. This is not as strong. This is much stronger. You can smell it in the tube. But as far as like high end things that do something different that maybe nothing else in my collection does, this is one of them. I would repurchase the YSL. I just, I like this. I thought about getting a couple more from this particular line. I have another matte formula from ABH. I did kind of forget to mention this because this is one that is a super comfortable formula. So the only lip bullet that I have from ABH, I do have like one gloss of hers. This one is in the shade Dead Roses, but this matte formula is extra comfortable. This would be number four in comfortability for a matte formula. I have a couple from She Glam. I did mention earlier, I'm not sure if I wanna feature them on my channel, but I did recently purchase these for a try on video. This one is in the cream version in the shade Nude, and this one is in the matte version in priority status. This is the Cosmic Crystal Matte Lipstick. I like the colors. So far, they're okay. And for the price point, because I think they're like $3 a piece, you can't beat it. I have one from Huda Beauty. This is the Sweet Cheeks Cream Lipstick. I'm sorry, it's the Cream Lipstick in Sweet Cheeks. It's more of an orangey tone and I like it. It has that like Juvia's Place kind of differently shaped um, tip. I think this is actually a really good, comfortable, long lasting, good pigment lipstick. I have one brand new one that I don't even think I've tried yet from Give Beauty. This is the original me lipstick and original recipe haven't even tried it yet it's that famous like matte lipstick i love gwen stefani i was a huge no doubt fan i named my dog after gwen loved her to death um may she rest in peace so i wanted to give this a shot to see you know did she knock this formula out of the park i don't know yet one that I keep for absolute nostalgia reasons is this Lancome. It's just a red lipstick. I would not wear this. It's years and years and years old, but my grandmother gave it to me. So I will hold on to this until the end. I have one from Lorac. This is in the exact same shade as another liquid lip that I have because it came in like a set, a duo. This is Premier Premier. I'd say this is a comfortable formula. This is like a, a satin. I wouldn't say it's full cream, but it has like a very strong vanilla scent. I do like this, but I got the, the duo at TJ Maxx. I wouldn't purchase full price for this. And finally, I have one from Makeup Forever. This is the Rouge Artiste in the shade Glistening Spinel. I got this. Again, this is another one for packaging purposes only. This is actually pretty true to the shade. So it's like a hot pink, like a magenta, but it's the overspray of the century. It's so glittery. Um, it is in the lipstick, so it is a little rhiny. Like you definitely feel it when you put it on, but I got it because it was pretty. That's, that's why I got it. I wouldn't get it again. It's just pretty. That is it for the bullet lipstick. So I'm gonna move the like liquid lips into frame. All right, these are all the liquid lips and what else do I have? Yeah, all liquid lips basically. So I'm gonna move these again out of frame because it's just a terrible thing to like look at the tops of these. I did miss one um, bullet lipstick. This is from Context. This is one I got in a boxy charm. This is in the shade Tears Are Falling. It's a cream formula, but it is comfortable. I like it. It's you know, it's a decent one. I've never heard of this brand before though. Okay, so I'm gonna try and group these together again by brand and then, you know, kind of like how I like them. Um, so first I have three from Ulta. This is from like their, like they do Christmas launches of lipsticks. They did them last year, but I didn't pick them up because I still had these ones from the previous year. These might all be different finishes or two different finishes. These are the matte liquid lipsticks. And then this is the high shine liquid lipstick. This, this is a really good formula. I'm actually surprised they're teeny tiny, but Ulta has a really comfortable formula. These matte liquid lipsticks are super comfortable. Actually, they, they really shocked me. So when these run out, if Ulta does another launch of their Christmas collection in these like packages, cause you get high shine, you get matte, you get some glosses and some lip oils. If they launch them again, I probably will pick them up. I have a couple that are like the moussey kind of velvety formula, so I'll bring those out. Um, let me see if I can try and grab them all. This may be it on like all the moussey kind of formula. So I have one from NYX. This is their lingerie XXL. This is in the shade Expose Me. It's it's a matte, um, not a matte, a um, like a cushiony velvety formula. So I like this one. 
This one is from Catkin. It's an Amazon purchase. It's also a moussey formula, but it's a little bit more emollient than the NYX. It has, mm, it's, it's definitely a thinner mousse formula. Then I have one from Kaleidos that is a thick mousse formula, super thick, probably the thickest. And it doesn't even, it's, it's a unique thick formula, but it dries down more matte than the other two. They're a little bit shinier. And then this one isn't. I like all three of them. This one has um, like a scent, so it's not my favorite. And then this is one of the Lip Maestros. This is just a Giorgio Armani um, mini, teeny tiny mini. It was probably like a free one that I got from Sephora. I'm not sure what shade this is in such tiny writing. It says 103. That's all I can kind of see. But um, very comfortable moussey formula. I did lie before. I have one other shade in those Power Move Lip Soft Matte Lip Crayons, and this is in the shade Sazerac. Uh, just again, like my favorite formula. I have three here from, this is KVD. This was, I think, oh my gosh, maybe before she rebranded, because they still say Kat Von D on them. This is the Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. Mm, probably my favorite liquid lipstick honestly like this is it dries down matte but it's still comfortable i have three shades i had a duplicate in lolita which is this middle one but i i did declutter it because i'll never go through it before it goes bad this is lovecraft which is the same as the lipstick that i had this is lolita and then this is mother i like all three of these shades i got one and i was like wow this has impressed me so i went back and got two more i have two here from nars these are very similar to the Bite Beauty Power Matte Lip Crayon, except they're a little bit creamier. They do stay a super long time. This is in the shade Valkyrie, and this is in the shade Damned. So it's called, yeah, the Velvet Matte Lip Pencil. Um, these are great. These are great. Love these. I guess I lied before. I see one here that is like that mousse formula. This is Rare Beauty's Matte Lip Cream. God, I could barely read that. On these minis, the writing is so small. It's in the shade Flawless, so it's another matte one or um, like cream mousse one. I don't love this color because it's very brown. It came in a set with a red one and I had to declutter the red one because it did go bad on me. And what I would do with them because I don't like this color on its own is that I would mix the two of them together. But now I, I really don't wear this that often, but it's a comfortable mousse formula. I have, I think like five of these that I would consider like a crayon, kind of a demi matte. Finish. This one is from Lorac. This is that Premier Premier, the same one that I had in the bullet. This is the matte lip color. It's it's comfortable. I like this lip crayon more than I like the um, bullet. This one is from Elf. This is a Jen Atkin collection. This is where she had um, the liner on one side and the lippy on the other. This is self-made pink. I don't think this is pink at all. That's more brown toned or orange to me, but um, it was okay, it's not my favorite. I have one from Kaja. This is more of a cream formula. This is the Heart Melter Moisture Melt Lip Gloss Stick. Okay, well that's why it's a cream formula. It's in the shape of a heart. It's cute, you you push it up. I'm actually surprised that I haven't like stabbed it yet, so I guess it give you a good amount of room in the lid there. Um, yeah, it's the click up, so it was comfortable. I, I think this is cute. I have one lippy from Lippy Sticks from ColourPop in the shade Cami. It is matte, but it is long wearing. It is comfortable. I think a lot of us have tried like the Lippy Sticks from um, from ColourPop. So this is a good one. Then I have one that's very similar. That is the Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayon, and this is in the shade Who the heck knows? Found it. Lead the way. It's very similar. It's just a different shape, but it's very similar to the ColourPop. Lippy sticks. I'd say this is a more creamy formula than the lippy sticks. So I actually prefer this one over the lippy sticks for like a matte crayon. I have probably three of like your standard liquid lips that don't dry down that are like a glossy finish. This one is from Kismet. This is like a boxy charm one. This is in the shade Baby. It's just fun, it's nice, and it's not sticky. This is the Bobbi Brown Crushed Liquid Lip in the shade Juicy Date. It's comfortable and it's not sticky. And this one I also got in a boxy charm. This is called V Cosmetics. It's in the shade Bubbly. This one's a fun one. I like this color. <laughs> I have one from Rare Beauty that's a balm. This is in Nearly Mauve. I like this color and I like her balms. I have a Demi Matte from Huda Beauty. This is in the shade Shika. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. 
Um, I haven't really tried this yet. I just got this, so I'm gonna try this out. I have two that are very similar and very unique formulas. So this one is from L'Oreal. I'm not even sure what they call it, but it is in the shade B Independent. And then this one is from Revlon. Revlon. This is the color Stay Ink. And this one is in the shade Partner in Crime. They're both like creamy, but they dry down, like sort of matte, but leave a gloss on the lip and they stay shiny like all day. They're such unique formulas. I can't even describe them better than that, but they both act similarly. They do the same exact thing. They're just unique. Nothing else I have in my collection is like these products. I mean, did I say it okay? Like they're matte and they're long wearing, but they have a shine on top of them. And then they last a super long time. Like, how do you describe that? I can't, I can't even do a better job than that. That's what they do and nothing else in my entire collection performs the way that they do. So try them, try them, they're fun. I have three that are fully matte formulas and two of them I don't like and one I do. So this is the Kylie Jenner, I think this was an Ulta exclusive and it's in the old packaging. This one is in the shade, I don't know, because it just says Ulta Beauty Matte. So I have no idea what the shade is. It's not the best, com most comfortable matte formula in a liquid lip. So I'm not sure why these had the popularity that they did. It hasn't gone bad yet. So I still will use it from time to time, but a lot of these things kind of sit in my collection because there are other ones I would grab over this. Another one that I don't love is the new About Face. This is the matte painted lip color in the shade Last Good Night. It just dries out a little bit too much for my liking. It's not a super comfortable matte formula. One I absolutely love that is absolutely comfortable is the Too Faced Melted Matte. This is in the shade Sellout. It's so good. I mean, it's so messy because I've used it so many times and I'll probably have to get rid of it soon, but it's just, it lasts a really long time and it's comfortable. So this one, love it. I have two that are like just the high shine liquid lips that I probably should have put in with these three. This one's from Juvia's Place. It doesn't really say what it is. It's probably actually like a thick, thick gloss. It's comfortable. It's in the shade Sis. Then I have one from Lorac. This is, oh, so it came in a trio, not a duo. This is in the shade Premier Premier. So it came in a trio. I was wrong. It came with the lip crayon, the lip gloss, and then the bullet lipstick all in the same shade. This is actually kind of sticky. It has a strong vanilla scent, like I said, but it's, it's the stickiest like lip product in like the liquid lips that I have. I have one here from Flower Beauty. This is in Honey Nude and this is like the, oh yeah, mix and matte. So on one end you have the matte bullet lipstick and then on the other end you have like this, I don't know, like a liquid lip or a gloss that you're supposed to put on top of it. This has like, um, I don't know, like glitters in it almost. And so it's like metallic. And so for that reason, it's like not my favorite because it is metallic. I like the matte, it's fine. And I, I just, I don't know, because it's kind of metallic, it looks metallic and so it doesn't look super natural on the lips. It's not bad, it's just not my favorite. I have one of the NYX Shine Louds. I think this is called Magic Maker is the shade. Um, I had a different one, it was purple. It was the only one I could get my hands on when they first launched because they sold out everywhere. And when they came back in stock, I did place an order for this color because it's a more everyday color. I think that these performs or give the same effect as like this one with just a one step application and they wear down better than this one does. So I can't recommend this. It was fun to try, but it's not one that I grab for every day if I want something no hassle. One that I've had a love hate relationship with is the Maybelline Super Vinyl Ink. When I first tried it, um, it was wearing down funny and I didn't like it. Sorry, it's in the shade Witty. But then when I tried it again, I actually really did like it. I think it's a unique formula. I remember putting it on in the morning and then like checking again at like three or four o'clock in the afternoon. I was like, wow, it's still on. So it's super long wearing. I don't know what the difference was between the first and second application, but the first time I tried it, it was kind of chunky. It was breaking down poorly. And then the second time I wore it, it was very comfortable. So I'm gonna keep continue to give this a shot and see how I feel about it. But after my second try and that impression, I am a fan of these. I have two more here. This one is the Clinique Chubby Stick Intense Moisturizing Color Lip Balm. And this is in the shade Broadest Berry. It's 
lovely. I think this is really comfortable formula. It's fun to put on. Um, the shade isn't one that I grab for every day and I kind of forget that I have this in my collection, but it's a nice one. Finally, I have one from Give Beauty. This is the I'm Still Here. This is the original recipe, but this is the matte liquid lipstick. I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to give it a shot, so I don't know how I'm going to like this or not. I have a feeling I am. I'm crossing my fingers. I will. That is it for all of the liquid lips. We'll move on to lip glosses, lip shines, and lip oils, and that'll close out all of the lips. Okay, this is the final set of lip products. This includes all my lip glosses, lip oils, lip tints, that sort of thing. So I have a couple in here that are like duplicates or that are from the same brand, but just in different shades. So I have four of the Maybelline Lifter glosses. These are fantastic. They're not sticky. They last a long time. It's a thick formula. They are very nice. I have two in the shade Pearl. I got two because I bought one and I liked it so much and then I was going to give my daughter one and then decided I'm going to keep it for myself. And then I have one in the shade Petal and one in the shade Silk. They are like glittery. They have like micro glitters in them, but they're not overly glittery. They're just a really hydrating formula. If you haven't tried this, then I'd say like run out and get it now. I have two of my favorite lip oils in my collection. This is the Jacqueline Cosmetics Lip Oil in the shade Candy Drip. It's a thicker lip oil for sure, but it's so hydrating and comfortable, and it really has like a nice pigmentation for a lip oil to it. This was part of the first launch, not the second where she expanded like the shade range, but this is my favorite in my collection right now. My second favorite in my collection is the NARS Oil Infused Lip Tint. This is in the shade High Security. It's a thinner formula than the Jaclyn Cosmetics. It does have um, a color to it, so it's not entirely sheer. It is slightly tinted, but it's just so comfortable. It's, it's very thin, but it's number two in my collection. I do have a Lux Lip Oil from ColourPop. I have heard that these go bad pretty quickly, but this one is still good or it appears to still be good. Um, I like this. It's not my favorite over the Jaclyn Hill or the NARS oil infused lip tint, but this is a good one. I have one from House Labs. This is a collection that she launched right before she rebranded and went into Sephora. So I think you can still get this discounted on Amazon site right now. This is the La Luce Lip Glaze in Granita. It's very pretty, it is very glittery, but it's a very comfortable formula. So you can see it's like really glittery. But I do like wear a lip liner and then throw this on and I like it, it's very comfortable. I have two here from Lunar Beauty. This is his lip gloss. This one is a tinted one. It's in a kind of like nudie shade and I really like this. It's a non-sticky formula. This is in the shade Aura and this is just a clear one in the shade Crystal Kiss. It's a very comfortable comfortable formula. I heard people talking about it, so I wanted to get my hands on this to try it, and it's good. It's not sticky, it's comfortable, I like it. I have one from Fenty Beauty. This is the Fenty Glow Gloss Balm. This just lasts a long time. I don't know how she did it. I'd say it's similar to this, but this I find actually lasts longer. So very similar formula, thicker formula, but um, lasts longer than the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. I have three here from Pat McGrath. This is her Mini Opulist Gloss. There's three of them because they came in like a trio set and it might have been like one of those holiday collections that they put together. This one is in the shade Lavendering. This one is in Dreamscape and this is in Naked Rose. These are very comfortable. They are shiny. They do have like sparkles in them. So it's noticeable when it's on your lips. So if you don't like that, then you know, I'd stay away from these Opulist ones. I don't mind it sometimes, but it is a very comfortable formula. And these trios, when they're like the holiday release, they're usually on sale. So they are usually, you know, fairly inexpensive if you wanted to try a Pat McGrath lip gloss. I have one here from ABH. This is her lip gloss in the shade Saint Tropez. This is such a cute, fun, pretty color. I was actually really surprised. This is almost like a duochrome, like it shifts colors and it is a very comfortable formula. I don't know why I didn't think I was gonna be impressed by this, but I was. I have one here from Buxom. This is the full on plumping lip cream in the shade Mudslide, there it is. Um, this is a stickier formula. It is a mild for being plumping, super mild, and it is kind of sticky, but it's still comfortable. It's just not my favorite. 
I have one here from Stila. This is the Beauty Boss Lip Gloss in the shade Synergy. It is very pretty. Again, it is like that sparkly. It does have like those micro glitters in it and it is sparkly, but it is comfortable. It is not as sticky as the Buxom I find. I have two here from Marc Jacobs. I think they're different finishes. They both say enamored on them, but this is the High Shine Gloss Lip Lacquer. And then this one here is the Dazzling Gloss Lip Lacquer. This is in the shade Sugar Sugar, and this is in Pink Parade. They're both very milky formulas. Like they have a strong vanilla scent and then they're very milky. I can't say, I can't describe why it's milky. It's just like creamy, milky. It leaves like a milky cast on your lips. Um, but I do like these. Again, this is probably one of those things that you can't get your hands on. But I, I mean, I, I reach for these. So that tells me something. Then I have a bunch here from the Ulta Beauty collection where they released, you know, that Christmas set that I was telling you about. So they're different finishes. This is two tinted lip oils. And I'm not sure that they have like any shades to them at all. These are the sheer lip glosses and the tinted lip oils. Here we go. Sheer lip glosses and tinted lip oils. Super good formula. Little tiny thing packs a good punch. I love these. I travel with them. Some of them are almost empty because I've used them so much. So um, like I said before, if they re-release something that's similar to this that is the same formula, like next holiday, I'm grabbing them. Then I have one, a little one from Jouer. I believe this is a mini, but I could be wrong. This is a lip topper in champagne gold. It's not sticky at all. It's just a very shiny, shiny lip topper. So as you can see, it sparkles. So I do like to put this kind of in the center of my lips for fun. I have one from e.l.f. This is the uh, this is a lip balm. This is the Ride or Die Lip Balm in Boss Berry. It's a really thick lip balm. Um, I had a different one that I killed off, but as you can see, it's like a paste almost. I do like this, it's very hydrating. Um, I like to kind of keep one in my purse at all times because it's just super hydrating and a lot of times I'm like, mm, I just could use something on my lips right now. So I like that one and I think it's like four bucks or something. So I was wrong before. This is the mini Jouer lip topper. I think they're in different shades, but this is the full size and then this is the mini. This is in the shade rose gold. Yeah, this was in champagne gold. So they're slightly different like sparkles. Um, it is very nice. Again, I just kind of pop this on the center of my lip. I have three here from Kosas. This is a set of their lip oils that I got probably last year. This is in the shade Unhooked, Unbuttoned, and Unzipped. That's funny. I didn't even realize that was the shade names. I think this is a comfortable formula. I don't mind this at all. Um, they give a little bit of tint to the lips it's not my favorite lip oil but it is good it's not sticky and it is hydrating for me i have one here from clinique this is their black honey i think is the shade in this one um i think this was really popular for a while it's so comfortable and it does give a good color to it like it actually has kind of a color payoff on your lips it's just like a chapstick with color it's really cool i i do like this one I have one here from CoverGirl. This is literally just a clear, like it, it came in a set where it went over top of a matte lipstick and then you put this on top of it. But I got rid of the matte lipstick because it really didn't have a good finish. It was very, very drying and it wasn't comfortable. Even with this on it, it still broke down funny. But I kept this because I like this as like a balm to go over like a matte lipstick that just needs a little bit of extra moisture. So I held onto this, there's nothing special about it. And then I have one from Givenchy. This is a recent launch of theirs. This is their liquid balm in the shade Rose Perfect. It's a very pinky color. It's very milky. It does have like a slight tingle to it. Um, so I think it's meant to be kind of plumping. It's very, very light, like very light plump, but it does have kind of a fragrance to it. I do like this. I wanted to give Givenchy a try because I, I don't think I have anything else from Givenchy. Oh yes, I do. I have the foundation now that I really like. So. Two for two, this is a good one, it's just pricey. I have a little one here from Ulta Beauty. This is the shiny sheer lip gloss. Nothing to write home about. I don't even think it's as good as these sheer lip glosses. I think these are better. So it's an okay one. I think I probably got this one for free. Then I have one here from Rare Beauty. This is her balm in Nearly Neutral. I really like this one. It's milky, it's creamy, it's not sticky. It has pretty good pigmentation. 
um, and it's hydrating. I just threw it on again. It feels really comfortable. I have one here from Tarte. This is the Maracuja Juicy Lip in the shade Hibiscus. Love it, love it, love it. So creamy, so creamy. I don't know how they keep a creamy formula like this in a stick. It is the kind that you, you know, you have to click up. But I think the reason that it's like that is so that it stays emollient and fresh in the tube and not all of it is exposed at once. But this is a really good one. I thought about getting the plumping one. I'm not a huge plumping gloss lip fan. So honestly, I would get this in a different shade because this is a really, really good formula. And then finally, I have two here from Makeup by Mario. This is his Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. This one is in the shade Plum Glow, and then this one is in the shade Mocha Glow. I think he only has like four different shades in this whole line, and I bought both of these at the same time, mostly because the other shades that I thought that I would like were out of stock, and these were the only two shades that I could get my hands on, so I immediately placed the order for the only two that were left in stock. They're all right. Um, they're the kind that you, you know, you have to, it's not a click up, it's a twist up. Again, it's because that's that ultra creamy, ultra shiny formula. And it's a really thin formula. I would say that the Tingle isn't my favorite and I don't love this shade. I would get or try the other colors from this line because it was a decent formula. Again, I'm just not a huge plumping lip fan, so it wasn't my favorite. And it's pretty thin, so it does wear off pretty quickly. And all right, so that is the end of all my lip products. I am done with part four of the makeup collection series. So check out my others. I have it all linked in my playlist. It's like the foundations, concealers, primer, setting sprays. And then next video is going to be part five and the final part for 2022. Um, and it's going to include all my favorites, which is eyeshadows. So that should be a fun one. Please like this video, comment if you want to, and I hope you subscribe to my channel. See you again. Bye.